guys. Me to me. Here at Life Journey Ministries, where we are the hands and feet of Christ. I want to thank you for watching this teaching. We know your time is very, very valuable. Um, so whether this is your first time with us or you've been visiting the channel since the beginning, welcome, welcome, welcome. We sure do appreciate your love and your support. Um, let us know that you watch by commenting below, hitting that like button, hallelujah, sharing it with someone. If you feel like this, this teaching blessed you and that it'll bless someone else, definitely share it with someone else, all right? Um, and then you can also connect with us on our website, and I will have all of these links all over the place. I'm going to put it in the video, and I'll put it in the description below. You can also find us. We are on Twitter. What is our name on Twitter? Spokeslady7. Um, we are on Instagram and Facebook. So we want to hear from you. We want to connect with you. We know that this is more than just me making something for you. Um, everything in the kingdom is relationship. No one does anything all by themselves. It takes a whole lot just to make one video. So definitely want to hear from you. We also do this thing at Life Journey Ministries called Speak to the Mountain. And so uh, Jesus told us to speak to the mountain. Tell it where to go. Be cast into the sea, right? So if you have a mountain that you would like to have spoken to, we want to know about it. We want to speak to that mountain with you. Or if you want to do it privately, I'll have our email address down there as well. And you can email us and we will speak to that mountain with you. We will also work with you if you need someone one-on-one -on -one with that. We can also get that stuff done as well. Um, we want to hear from you. Amen. Hallelujah. And so without further ado, it is our prayer that the teaching that is coming up here in a few moments blesses you. Um, we really want that. So we pray that you open up your ears and your heart so that you can hear what God is saying to us in this moment. And may God bless you richly. Smooches. Hey guys, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I don't know, flip those around at night. Um, whatever time it may be, wherever you're tuning in from. First of all, I want to say thank you for tuning in because I know these days you have so many other options, but I do thank you for tuning in and listening to this one. Uh, today I have for you a communion message. So if you don't have any elements for communion, pause the video, go grab them, and then come right back here. All right, hallelujah. Father God, we come to you right now with thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord. Lord, we say thank you, thank you, thank you for the breath in our bodies, Father God, for the movement of our limbs, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for your goodness, for your grace, for your tender mercies, Father God, for your loving kindness that you have bestowed upon us, Father. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he came and he did everything he was supposed to do on this earth. And we thank you that we can do those things that he did also, Father. Father God, we thank you for your word. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word that renews our mind. We thank you for your spirit, Father. Now, right now, Father God, we ask that none of me and all of you, Father, that the message that you would have go forth actually goes forth on today, Father. And we ask these things right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to read for you from the Passion Translation, John 6, 48 through 58. And it says, I am the true bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert and died. But standing here before you is the true bread that comes out of heaven. And when you eat this bread, you will never die. I alone am this living bread that has come to you from heaven. Eat this bread and you will live forever. The living bread I give you is my body, which I offer as a sacrifice so that all may live. These words, Jesus, these words of Jesus sparked an angry outburst among the Jews. They protested, saying, does this man expect us to eat his body? Jesus replied to them, listen to this eternal truth. Unless you eat the 
body of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have eternal life. Eternal life comes to those who eat my body and drink my blood, and I will raise him up in the last day. For my body is real food for your spirit, and my blood is real drink. The one who eats my body and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. The Father of life sent me, and he is my life. In the same way, the one who feeds upon me, I will become his life. I am not the bread your ancestors ate and later died. I am the living bread that comes from heaven. Eat this bread and you will live forever. Amen. Hallelujah. That is the promise of eternal life that we get because we believe in Jesus and because we eat his body. Amen. Now, this is a communion message. It's not a teaching message. So it's not going to be long and in depth into how far. I mean, we could dig so deep into these words of Jesus. Um, but. The blood that Jesus is talking about, we know it's not literal blood. We know Jesus didn't cut himself and all that stuff and they didn't drink his blood and, you know, it's not a cult. Amen. Whatever you have available to drink to represent his blood. You got juice, water, coffee, pop, whatever you got at the house. That's good enough. And then when Jesus says flesh. Well, even way back then, you know, the people he was actually standing in front of took those words the wrong way. They got mad. They thought he was talking about cannibalism. Like, come on now. If Jesus really wanted them to eat his body, how could we eat it today? There wouldn't be any less. And if it was, it would be pretty bad. And I'm not sure I would even want to eat that. So we know that he is talking about the word, the word of God. Eat this word. Amen. Yes, the manna that fell from the sky was great. It sustained them for a time. However, the only thing that can sustain us until for up until this time and until Jesus comes back is the word. Hallelujah. So when he says his flesh or his body, he is referring to the blood. Amen. And so with the or he's referring to his the word. And with his blood, whatever we're using. Even in some churches, you know, you still use real wine. Whatever it is that you're using, that represents the shed blood on the cross. Amen? So now I'm going to make a few bold statements. Communion is actually a supernatural advantage. And I know I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself and all that stuff. I haven't really started making announcements and what I plan on doing and things like that. However, I do plan on coming before you with more and more communion messages that actually break down communion and gives us a deeper understanding of what it is and how to partake in it and how to use this spiritual advantage to our advantage. Amen. So communion is one of the most powerful medicines we can take. Amen. I mean, some people take blood pressure medicine, medications for diabetes, medications to suppress certain things but the truth of the matter is any kind of medication that we give here on earth that stuff doesn't cure you know um, even if you're taking an antibiotic for some kind of bacterial infection that you have gotten guess what it still may not work but we know that the word of god we know that taking communion over certain things and certain issues in our lives will work all the time it will work and so how one of the most important things is how we look at things and how we believe them amen so we have to take communion seriously not religiously and not out of tradition you know you know your church does communion on whatever sunday um you know that certain people are that give awesome communion messages and you just feel so good and so moved and so amped up that Woo! I had communion. I'm good to go. You know, I'm covered by the blood. It has to be more than that. We have to believe right. But in order to believe right, we have to know right. Um, an old deacon at a church I used to go to, he used to say, you know, you know, when you know better, you do better. And so a lot of it is when we take communion at church, we only leave such a short time for communion. We don't really leave time to 
teach communion, what it is, and how we can actually have communion at home, how we can have communion daily, because it is really God's goal, part of our relationship, is to daily commune with the Lord. Amen. And part of being in daily communion with the Lord would be to be in the word, to be in prayer, to spend time in meditation, to spend time listening to what the Holy Spirit would be saying to you right now, to go and have a dialogue back and forth between you and the Lord. That is the start. Amen. This right here is the action. Um, you know, Yes, faith is very inward. Faith is what I believe, but my faith causes me to do certain things. Because I believe, I seek him more. Because I believe him, I read his word to know more about him. Because I believe in him, I spend time with him to work on my relationship with him. Amen? Okay, so every part of what Jesus was saying in this passage is important. But I'm going to pull out a few keys here to help us. So, the very last part of that, he says, the one who eats my body and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. So first of all, right there, Jesus is actually alive in us. We are alive in him because of the actions that we are taking, and we're only taking these actions in communion because we believe him. Amen? Amen. The Father of life sent me, and he is my life. I'm going to repeat that. The Father of life. Father God in heaven. He is the Father of life. Life. Anything that has to do with life, if it has to do with sin, death, and the grave, is not from God. The Father of life sent me. Sent who? Jesus. And he is my life. Jesus is saying right there that the Father of heaven, the Father of life, Father God, Abba Father, the Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, He is my life. Can we say the same? Can we actually get up and say, you know what? Hallelujah. The Father of life is my life. You know, as we begin to grow and mature into who we are thinking we're supposed to be or who we have become, what part of he is my life do we actually partake in daily? You know, there's times when I get up and I get dressed and in this moment, I'm a nurse, right? So then there's people that say nursing is their life. You know, are you a pastor? Pastoring is your life. And a lot of times that's what we say. We Our occupation becomes our life. You know, I'm a wife. So being a wife and a homemaker becomes a person's life. I am a mother. You know, being a mom becomes that person's life. And their whole identity is wrapped up in who they can or what titles they can put on themselves or what hats they wear when the only hat that Jesus is actually telling me about right here, he's not saying that I'm Jesus the Messiah. He's not saying that I'm Jesus who does miracles. He is saying that the father of life, he is my life. And if you read deeper into this, because the father of life is my life, I am the Messiah. Because the father of life is my life, I can do miracles. I can do great things. I have the strength to climb up on this cross and shed my blood and die for you all. Because the father of life is my life. And if we turned around and did those same things and said, guess what? Because the father of life is my life, I can be a wife. Because the father of life is my life, I can be a mother or a father. Because the father of life is my life, I can be a student, I can be a nurse, I can be a doctor, I can be a lawyer, I can be whatever it is that God is calling me to be because the father of life is my life. There's another place in scripture where Jesus said that he only did the things that God the father told him to do or that he saw him do. Amen. So for me and you, what we see the Father doing may be completely different, but those are the things that we should be doing. 
Me as a nurse, I saw the father a long, long time ago showing me things that had to do with the medical field and had to do with nursing. So that's why I went in that direction. If he would have showed me something else, my life would have took a different turn or a different course. And whatever you're calling yourself in this day and in this age, you need to be seeing the father do those things. So that when you get up in the morning, you can declare that the father of life, he is my life. Amen. And so in the same way, the one who feeds upon me, Jesus, I will become his life. So now Jesus will become your life when you feed on him. You know, there's times when you see a couple and they've been married forever. You know, you know a lot of couples like, man, they've been together since, you know, before Jesus was here. Well, well, what begins to happen with those people? They begin to look alike. They begin to act alike. <laughs> they dress alike, you know. And even when you begin to look at their kids, their kids sound like them when they talk. A lot of the rationalizations are the same. And even if it's a really close-knit family, you can see these traits in generations. Right? And so, when you begin to feed upon Jesus, well, Jesus is only feeding on the Father. We should begin to look more and more like Jesus. We should begin to sound more and more like Jesus. We should start to think like Jesus. We should start to talk like Jesus. We should start to walk like Jesus. I mean, there, there was a video that I was looking at not too long ago of my middle daughter. And I had to look twice because she, and she was walking away in this video and I had to look twice because it looked like me walking. And I was like, I, I know I wasn't there. Oh, wait, that wasn't me. That's my baby. That's how it should be with us. We should be in tune and in step with Jesus. And if we are in tune and in step with Jesus, then we would be in tune and in step with God the Father. Amen? I am, it says here, I am not the bread your ancestors ate and later died. He's talking about the man in that part. I am the living bread that comes from heaven. So yeah, manna fell from heaven and it was an awesome miracle. However, that was a miracle of mercy, right? The miracle that we get in Jesus is a miracle that is everlasting. The manna was only for a specific time in a specific season. But right now we have Jesus who is forever. Amen, hallelujah. It says, eat this bread and you will live forever. So we got to be feeding on the word, right? Feeding on it. I got to see where I was at now. So every part of what Jesus was saying is important. And so when we feed on this word, we have to allow the word to dwell in us. You know, and a lot of us will say, well, I've read the word. I know the word. I can quote scripture. I can quote from Genesis to Revelation. Being able to quote it is one thing. Mental knowledge and being able to say you're so ridiculously smart and you know how this one lines up with this one and this scripture correlates to this scripture, that's great. But if it's not in your heart, if you're not living it, it's really not dwelling in you. Amen? So we have to allow the word to become us. And we have to allow ourselves to become the word. Honestly, the greatest thing, the greatest hindrance to all of this becoming true and real in our lives is us. If that's the bottom line. Because at the end of the day, I'm the one that either dwells in the word or not. I can't say, oh, well, if I didn't have to take care of the kids or if I didn't have to be a mom or if I didn't have to work or any of that. No. If we truly had a heart to serve God. We truly had a heart to allow the word to dwell in us and to become the word and the word become us because that's what Jesus said, right? We would do what we had to do to make that a reality because the truth of the matter is if it's something that we really want, it doesn't matter how expensive it is or not, where it is or where it is. And if it's something that we really want, we're going to make it happen. So this has to be something that you earnestly desire to go make it happen. Amen. So then we have to allow that seed to grow. 
the word of God is so, so many things, and that's a whole nother series of uh, teachings of what the word of God is. But one of the things that the word of God is, is a seed, right? And when you begin to spend time in that word, that seed will get planted down on the inside of it. But even with any other seed, we have to allow that seed to grow. Um, some of you know this, some of you don't. I love planting. I love gardening outside. I love my indoor plants. It's cold where I'm at right now. Where I live, it's cold. And uh, so I have a bunch of my indoor stuff going right now. And I love planting from a seed and watching it go through the different stages of development and growing up into something fruitful that I can eat, that I can give away. Um, there's something so satisfying about that. And so with the word of God, we have to do the same thing. When I get my seeds, I have to go through and make sure I got good seed first. You got to pick out good seed. And then you have to make sure that you plant it right. You know, certain spacing, certain seeds need to be in direct sunlight. Certain seeds can't handle direct sunlight or, you know, when they start to come forth. Some stuff needs this much water. Some stuff needs drier soil. And so... That there is cultivating that seed, fertilizing it, making sure that it has everything it needs to grow and develop and be a healthy plant so that it can produce healthy fruit. And then even after you've done all of that, you have to protect this plant and the fruit from insects and different, who knew like um, plants can get like fungal infections and all kind of stuff like that. You have to protect it. Like uh, we have a nice size yard out there. And so we have to protect it from birds and rabbits and squirrels and all kinds of stuff that wants to come and take your fruit. That's the same thing that you have to do with the word. When you start to get into the word and you want this word to live on the inside of you, you have to fertilize this word and you have to speak over yourself and speak over this word and make declarations and confessions over this word and read it and read it and read it. Joshua 1 and 7 tells us to meditate in this word day and night, you know, so that you find good success. And then after you have done all of that stuff to actually get the word in you and get it planted and get it watered and get it fed and get it fertilized and all of that, then you have to begin to protect that word. So what do you do to protect that word? You know, you go work in their stress at work. You go in their strife over here. You got to get away from the strife and you have to watch your own mouth and you have to be so, so careful to protect that word so that it can grow up and produce much fruit. Amen. And so we allow the seed to grow in us. And as it begins to grow, we begin to realize that this bread, this cup <laughs> is my healing. This bread, this cup is my restoration. It is my deliverance. It is my prosperity. It is more than just life everlasting. Because trust me, if life everlasting was the only thing that we got, that is more than enough. But this here bread and this here cup is my everything. And I can take communion over prosperity. <laughs> I can take communion over restoration. I can take communion over deliverance. I can take communion over healing. Whatever I want to take it over, whatever I need to be taking it over, that's what I do. And so I don't have to wait to that special Sunday to say, oh, I'm going to take communion. I don't have to wait to that moment in church where they say, okay, we're going to have a moment of silence to get our hearts right before the Lord. No, get your heart right before the Lord daily. Maybe some of us might need to do it more than once a day. Get your heart right before the Lord. Take evaluation of yourself. What is it that you are lacking? Matter of fact, take communion over that lack because it's not in God's will for us to even be in lack. And when we begin to realize these things, oh, it's an amazing thing. You see, we partake in communion. Yeah, it's a small cracker and a small drink or whatever you have at home. In its original form, it was a meal. You know, what we do now does not completely represent what communion was way back when they first started Passover with the blood of the lamb on the doorposts. It was a meal, a holy meal, and every part of it was significant. 
And that's why I'm doing this is because I definitely want to come before you and begin to give you the different aspects and the different parts of communion so that it has the actual meaning behind it when you do get to that special Sunday. It's more than just, oh, hallelujah, we get a, you know, I've heard the kids say, we get a snack today. No, it's more than just a snack, hallelujah. And so when we partake, we have to remember so much, but the one thing that is so vital to remember is that everything is all done. I want us to make sure that we remember that. Jesus has already suffered his stripes. He has already been chastised. He has already been bruised. He has been beaten. He has already died. He has already risen, which means every single thing that you could ever need, that you could ever want, is already done. So what you have to do is apprehend it. And we can actually take communion as part of representing me apprehending it. You know, I believe I received my healing. And every time that symptom shows up, you say it again. I believe I received my healing for. I believe I received my healing for. You know, if it's lack in your life. So I believe I received deliverance from lack. And every time lack wants to show up, you say, uh-uh, I believe I received my deliverance from lack. And whatever it is, you believe you receive whatever that thing is because when Jesus is finished works, it is already done and it is already yours. Amen. Hallelujah. So through Jesus' life, death, and death and resurrection, we have the opportunity to obtain life. And the way Jesus said it, life more abundantly. So I actually challenge you, if you're not having life more abundantly, start right there. I believe I received life more abundantly. Amen. I believe I have this good life that Jesus has spent his life for. I believe I received that. That should be a daily declaration. I believe I received life abundantly. Life. Now, while we're here on this earth and life. When Jesus comes back, hallelujah, and I have a little secret, because when Jesus comes back, we all are going to have some type of life. It's just some of us are not going to have the life that we wanted or the life that we thought we were with God in glory. Hallelujah. There are some people on this earth, unfortunately, who have not received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, who do not live according to his word, who have rejected him, who are going to spend life everlasting in hell so for us as christians this is a win-win we get life abundantly here and life everlasting with god the father that's a win-win we just have to figure out how to walk this life out here and now amen and that is part of my goal here with um starting these communion series with you all and so now we're going to go ahead and partake in communion Amen. So I know I asked you all to go grab your elements. If you didn't do it, pause now and go do it because we're going to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. So I have my wafer here. This is his body, which was broken for us. As often as you remember it or do this in remembrance of him. Amen. And this drink represents the blood that was shed for us on the cross. Take and drink in remembrance of him. Amen. Father God, we thank you right now for the shed blood of Jesus. We thank you for his broken body, Father God, that was broken so that we don't have to be broken. We thank you, Father God, for his life, his death, and his resurrection. We thank you for eternal life, Father. And right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hey guys, so before I close out completely, um, the Lord had been, he's been really developing in me what he really wants me to get to you guys. And part of that is, you know, everyone has something that they're supposed to be doing for the Lord. Everyone has some kind of call on their life. No, not everybody's called to preach. Not everyone is called to teach. But everybody is called to do 
something. That is why we are the body. You know, some people are necks, some people are fingers. Believe it or not, some people are toes, right? Because your body is not complete if you don't have your fingers and your toes, right? So every part of the body is important. So in order to become part of the body of Christ, what do you got to do? You got to receive Christ. So what he wants me to make sure that I always offer is salvation. And part of the reason he wants me to always offer salvation is because not everybody's going to go to church. That just is the bottom line. Yes, there's probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of churches open in the name of the Lord Jesus. However, of all the billions of people on this earth, guess what? Not all of them are going to show up on Sunday morning or Saturday morning or Wednesday or Friday or whenever your doors are open. Some people are just not going to step foot into a church. Some people are not going to show up at the crusades. People are people. And irregardless of who they are, what they are, what they've done, what they haven't done, God still loves them. And God still wants them. And God is still chasing after them with an unyielding, undying, fervent love. And so part of that love is what I'm doing right now. It's offering Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. So if you have never accepted Christ, this is your moment. If you have and you know you're just you're just not in the right place. Um, you know, I hear the kids talk about they're not in the right mind space and you know, you do some things in life that you're not proud of, all of those things, um, you know, growing up in church like I did, they would say, you know, you backslid. Um, wherever you find yourself at, if you need to renew your relationship with the Lord, then this is your moment. Amen. So whether you're alone or if you're with a whole bunch of people, whatever, if you're listening and there's other people around you, you can say this prayer quietly. You can yell it from the housetops, whatever suits you, right? And I do have a scripture here for you. You know, it's all about the word. Revelation 3 and 20. Yeah. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears and listen, listens to and heeds my voice to open the door, I will come into him and eat with him. And he will eat with me. Jesus, right now, standing at the door of your heart and he is knocking and if you want him all you got to do is open the door you can pray this prayer with me father god i come to you right now admitting that i am in need of a savior father save me i believe that jesus is the christ the son of the living god i believe that he died on the cross and that he rose in three days. Jesus, come into my life and be Lord of my life. I believe in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it. Jesus in your heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Saints, welcome to the family. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I definitely want to hear from you. Okay, don't just leave me out here wondering, hey, did you pray or not? I mean, I could tell if you watched, but um, talk to me. Let me know. Uh, if you prayed that prayer, you need to get into a Bible-believing, faith-filled, Holy Spirit-filled church. It's very important that you don't just stay where you are, that you grow. Amen. Hallelujah. And there's one more little bit that goes along with that because once you become saved, now, yeah, I probably should have gave you this disclaimer in the beginning, but once you become saved, you're like, ooh, really making the devil mad. Uh, so the devil definitely does not want you to be saved. The devil wants you to continue to just be a hot mess forever. Um, so you need some strength to help you with that. And that strength is the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I am going to lead you in another prayer to receive the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. We know that there is no time or distance in the spirit. 
So, therefore, I can pray that you receive the Holy Spirit right there where you're watching, whether you're listening in your car, you can get the Holy Spirit. Whether you're in the office, you're on the treadmill, you're at home on the couch, the Holy Spirit can fall upon you. Amen. Hallelujah. So, let's pray this prayer right now. Say, Lord, I also ask you for the power to live the life that you intended for me to live. So I ask you, Father, right now for the precious gift of the Holy Spirit and for my heavenly language as evidence of receiving the Holy Spirit. Right now, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. And I just pray that you receive the Spirit. Hallelujah, the Holy Spirit of God. If you receive the Spirit, once again, I want to hear from you. This is an exciting moment. The Bible tells us that every single time someone becomes saved, the angels rejoice. So can you imagine the rejoicing that is happening right now in heaven because you prayed that prayer? Hallelujah. 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 Father God, we thank you for each and every one of your children that has Pray this prayer of salvation. We thank you, Father God, for each and every one of your children that has renewed their relationship with you. We thank you for restoration and salvation. We thank you for deliverance right now, Father God. And then we thank you, Father, for your precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, we plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of them right now, Father. And we pray for their protection from the enemy, Father. We pray that their minds be renewed with your word and that you begin to just outpour your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding to them right now. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey guys, it's me, Tanise, again. It is my prayer that this video blessed you and helped you along this journey that we call life. Hallelujah, because we all know we need a little strength and a little encouragement along this journey we call life. Amen. So, want to hear from you. So, definitely hit me in the comment section below. Use any of my contact information that's provided for you below or that was provided in the beginning of the video. want to be praying with you, praying for you, and speaking to those mountains. Amen. Thank you for watching. Hallelujah. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe. Subscribe. Got that right. And hit that notification icon so that you are notified every single time I put new videos and new teachings out. Also, like and share with someone else who you know will be blessed by this. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I go, let me pray the blessing upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. May God bless you richly. And until next time, smooches.